My name is Alan Hawes. I'm Vice President of Technical Staff for Solutions and Software at Cypress Semiconductor. In the previous lessons, I showed you how to build applications using the built-in services, specifically the immediate alert service and the battery level service. Although the Bluetooth SIG has defined quite a few common services, which I'm sure you saw when you looked at the component, what happens when you want to implement something that isn't in the list? It's really simple. All you need to do is add a custom service. Let's say you would like to use a cell phone to display the position of your finger on the CapSense slider. We're going to write this application from scratch. Start by creating a new project. Then add the BLE component. Now give it a personality. In the General tab, select the Custom Profile, GAT Server, GAP Peripheral. I'll configure GAP first. In the GAP Settings tab, give your device a memorable name. Also, remember to check the Silicon Generated ID box to create a unique UUID for your device. In the Advertisement Packet, make sure you tell the client your name and service UUID. That's all that's required to make your device connectable. In the Profiles tab, you can see we already have a custom service. PSOC Creator built it for you automatically. Rename that service to CapSense. This name will set the automatically created pound-defined prefix for this service. Then give it a 16-bit UUID with the value CAB5. That hex value corresponds to the CapSense profile built into the CY Smart tool. By using this UUID, we're telling the client that we support this Cypress-specific profile. You can give your custom service a different UUID if you wish, but if you do that, then you will either need to view that with the raw data in the GAT database or write your own client application to handle the data. Next, we rename the custom characteristic to slider. This will set the next part of the pound defined for this service. Then give it a 16-bit UUID of CAA2. This UUID indicates that the device is a slider as opposed to a button or a trackpad. In the descriptor properties, check read so the client can access the data and notify to enable the GAT server notification support. Notifications are GAT server initiated updates that are sent to the GAT client. We do not need the custom descriptor in this example, so you can just delete it. Finally, add a client configuration descriptor and give it a memorable name. This characteristic is often referred to as the CCCD. The client configuration descriptor is written by the GAT client, the phone, to enable the GAT server, your peripheral, to send notifications of data being changed. That completes the BLE setup. Next, add a CapSense block and set it up for a slider. Rename it to just CapSense to make the generated APIs simpler. In the Widgets tab, add the slider. It defaults to five sensors, which is exactly what's on the PSOC 4 BLE Pioneer board. In the pen editor file, assign the sensors to port 2, pins 1 through 5. Your board has the CapSense modulation capacitor attached to port 4, pin 0, so assign it that way. Now, generate the application to check your design and to create the APIs. In main.c, I will create three global variables. Two are Booleans for the notification status and the connection state and one is the ID handle of the connection. The use of these globals will become obvious in a moment. As you've seen before, we need a handler to react to the GAP events and the GAT database access events. This handler is just a big switch statement. You need to start advertising when the stack gets turned on or when there's been a disconnection. When a connection is made, you assign the connection state global variable. Then you need to handle a write event. This happens after a connection when CY Smart tells the device that it wants to be notified about changes to the CapSense characteristic. You will store 
what is written from the GAT client into the GAT server database. In addition, you will set the global CapSense notify variable. Now let's go to our main function and start the components. First, turn on global interrupts. Next, start the CapSense and begin scanning the slider. Now start BLE and register the event handler we just wrote. In the main loop, we will process the events as usual, just as we've done in the previous lessons. Then, we will check to see if a CapSense scan has been completed and we are connected to a client. There's no point in sending information if we're not connected to anything. If not, we just loop again and continue processing events. If there's data ready, then we read the slider position and start the next scan. If there's a finger present, then the return value will be something other than hex FF. And so we simply write that into the GAT database and notify the client of the change of position. If we program the device and then connect to it from CY Smart, you can see that moving your finger along the slider updates the screen. That's pretty cool, eh? As always, you're welcome to email me at alan underscore hawes at cypress.com with your comments, suggestions, criticisms, and questions. Thank you.